Um, so we're going to start um, sort of on what what's on the left there, or I, I don't want to call them like passive communication tools, but they're sort of communication tools that you don't have a whole lot of control over. Um, and then on the right side there um, are sort of the tools where you as an instructor or the, you know, the owner of the Blackboard course organization, you know, you have a lot of control over what's going on and how it's set up. So um, first off, and, and the, like these, uh, these first four here, let me see if I can hold on. I'm going to switch over. Um, the first four are basically on the institution page. Okay. And oh, give me just a second here. Sure. I wonder if I could pull my my blackboard up on a different thing, but um, no, that's interesting to differentiate them. Yeah, if that makes sense. Okay. Huh. All right, let's see if this works. Oh, shoot, I, I just did that wrong, sorry. No, it's, okay. it's always the other way, right? If it's supposed uh, to do <laughs> Yes, well, I just clicked the wrong button as usual. That's what I know, that's what I mean. If, I, yeah, if I'm supposed to click that one, I click the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. So here, let me try this again. She Murphy's Law in the um, computer somehow, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, it doesn't look like it's going to let me do that. So I'm going to go. This is why we have plan B. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Um, so anyway, first off is the institution page. Now, you probably recognize this. Um, this is what you land on when you log into Blackboard. Mm -hmm. um, and on the institution page, um, this is kind of where you're going to see some university level announcements, you know, so things going out that that sort of affect everybody are going to be posted on this page. Um, something that is going to be coming out soon is uh, that we are um, going to be deleting some old courses in Blackboard. Um, these are courses that have been around for quite a while, and we are um, trying to get better at managing our storage because we are over our limit. And mm -hmm. um, although the people at Blackboard have been very nice to us so far, um, that is going to be a problem. So what we're doing is we're we're going to be you know we're going to have an announcement here that says, hey, you know we're going to be deleting courses that were taught before this date and you know and if you want them here's how you can save them um, mm -hmm. but anyway so that's that's where you see sort of that university level stuff um, one thing too about the institution page is that um, what you're the information you're gonna see is customized to your role so if you're you know a staff or instructor you're gonna see certain things if you're a student you're gonna see certain other things you know like for this this is for staff so um, you know you have stuff to help you learn more about blackboard get help things like that students will see similar kind of things but you know it's it's gear it's information that's geared toward them okay but anyway you know that's just kind of a quick one um, mm -hmm. the next thing is the profile page um, mm -hmm. This is mostly populated um, with information from the university, so you do have some limited ability to edit. Um, okay. But this is just sort of like when somebody's in Blackboard and they say, you know, hey, I want to, who's Judy? You know, it will pop up with, you know, who you are and your title and just your email address, that kind of stuff. Nothing, you know, nothing mm -hmm. too detailed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next is the activity stream, and this is this is really this is one of the new tools that they've got in Ultra. And um, what this is is it is essentially a stream of everything that's going on in all of your courses. Um, you can see how it's got stuff that's upcoming and you know the stuff for today. So like uh, say an announcement gets an instructor posts posts an announcement in a course, all that'll show up in students activity streams um it's you know and it, it'll show up i think in your activity stream too the person who posted it uh okay. the th 
and and it's it's all activity it's like if if there's an assignment due if there's a new assignment posted if you know it's it's a lot of information mm -hmm. the thing mm -hmm. about the activity stream is is that it can be customized by the end user so um <clears throat> excuse me um mm -hmm. so it can essentially almost be turned off um because you can decide which notifications you want to receive, how often you want to receive them, um, and you know if you want to receive them at all. So nice. um, if you click, yeah, if you click that gear icon um, mm. that I've got mm -hmm. circled up there and, or marked mm -hmm. up there, and you're going to see this gear icon in a lot of different places in Ultra. It always takes you to settings, but okay. It, it, which settings it's going to take you to are going to depend on where you're at at the time. So here we're going to go to our notif. If we click that gear icon, we would go to our notification settings, where you could determine which notifications you're going to receive in your activity stream. You can determine which notifications you're going to re receive in your because um, <clears throat> Blackboard or Ultra also does this sort of daily email thing. Uh -huh. where it will email you notices. Um, you can decide whether you want them to come in as they are posted, or you can also select to just sort of have it as sort of like a one once a day type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. But again, just it's important, I think, to keep in mind that this is not a perfect tool because the, you know, the student could turn, <clears throat> excuse me, uh -huh. could turn this off. So, um, you know, they're adults, they are responsible for this information, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just some, something to be aware of, so. Right, so like if a professor posts a um, an announcement, it would go here and it would go in their student email? Is that, or um, is it? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll talk a little in a little okay. more detail there, yep. but yes, the, okay. the announcement yep. okay. will post here uh -huh. um, and it, it will post in a couple other places. Um, actually, they've changed announcements quite a bit in Ultra, so I okay. don't want to get too far so ahead we'll of myself. Yeah, no, not ahead. Right, right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting. OK, thanks. All right. Yep, yep. yep. Great. Okay. Um, next is our course calendar. This, again, is like the activity stream in that it can be customized by the end user. Um, you can um, you know, decide which calendars you want to include on this calendar. Um, the other thing you can do, if you see up here um, in this, where this red box is, this, these are sort of your navigation options. You can um, switch from, uh, or you can filter, I should say, for just your due dates. So like anything that's due will just show up. It won't have all the other stuff like your class times and things like that. Um, and you can alternate from day or month view. Um, and then to move, site you know if you want to advance to the next month or see what happened the month previous you use these arrows mm -hmm. um, okay. again if you'll notice we've got our icons up here at the top you'll see our gear icon uh, this time um, well and the plus icon too the plus icon is another one you're going to see a whole lot in ultra um, basically all that all that if you click the plus icon, you're going to be adding something. <laughs> but what you're going to add depends on where that icon is located and when you clicked it. So um, for this particular example, if you click the plus icon, that opens this edit or this add item panel where you're going mm -hmm. to go to add things to your calendars, such as events or um, office hours is another good one. You, you see how these things are, you know, these are things you can set it up to repeat, you know, end after so many occurrences. So there's quite a bit of flexibility there. Um, mm -hmm. And you can also edit your course schedule um, mm -hmm. by clicking that plus icon. Okay. Uh -huh. If you click the gear icon, that's where you go to select your calendars. Um, and you see these uh, three dots over here. This is another the uh, yes, right. they call yes, it. Those, the uh -huh. kebab. Yeah, um, I've but heard that funny is names another those. one. Okay. Yeah, that's another mm -hmm. one you're going to see a lot of, and it's mm -hmm. going to offer you some more options. But if you mm -hmm. click it here on your calendar settings, that's going to allow you to add um, calendars or like share your calendar to an outside calendar. So I think you could share it to like a Google Calendar or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah. But again, what you can see 
Oh, go ahead. You had a question. No, no. I would it work with our Outlook, or does it? Do you know if it plays well with yeah, Microsoft? I, I believe yeah, it does. So, okay. Um, okay, I, okay. I haven't done it because it just you'd be surprised how many you know it there's a lot of information and i don't do that simply because i don't want all that other stuff because i have a lot of sort of i'm in people's classes to <laughs> to help them out so i end up as you can see i've got a whole giant list of things here that um you know i could potentially be receiving in oh, my calendar so you know, oh, that that's that's yeah. one of the reasons you can you can set it how you want it, you know, so uh -huh. you can sort mm -hmm. of hopefully keep yourself from getting too heavy into information overload. Got but it, um, but all you have to do is, is check the boxes um, mm -hmm. to either add or remove the calendar. Real simple. OK, cool. Um, yeah, but those, you know, are some of your um, sort of what am I call, you know, I. I don't, passive is not a good word, but it they're just you don't have as much control over those particular uh, tools. OK, mm -hmm. however, okay. Um, messaging is a little different. Um, wow. Messaging and ultra um, is like in the original view, it was basically done with email. Um, now they've kind of done this thing where they contain messaging completely within um, black board so um you can send the messages into emails but you do have to select you know you have to choose to do that uh, okay you know so it's just you know it's a little bit different i'm at, at first honestly they didn't have that option um mm -hmm. but we asked them to add it and they did um mm -hmm. but there there are a couple of different ways that you can get to your messages um the mm -hmm. first is on the the uh base landing, right, the institution page or your base navigation page, I guess is what I want to call oh. it, um, okay. by clicking that messages tab. Mm -hmm. If you click that messages tab, you'll see all of your courses and organizations listed out. And um, anything you have a message in, you can see right there in that mm -hmm. bottom left corner of the, of the um, tile, it tells okay. you, hey, I've got, you've got so many messages, okay? Uh -huh. So that, so that's it's kind of nice that you can you can yeah. you know kind of scan all of your courses at once, and you don't right. have to like pop into each course to check if somebody, you know, has yeah. has sent a message. That's very nice. That is that does have an appy feel to it. So that's cool. I get that. That's nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. um, again, you can also check your messages inside your course. Now this time, okay. if you're inside your course and up at the top in your ultra course, um, on that left, upper left side is sort of your navigation tabs. And one of those takes you to the messages page and that will display all the messages you have in your course. Okay. Again, you'll see over here on the left, it'll tell you if you've got unread messages. So you don't necessarily have to spend a bunch of time scrolling through. Um, you know, it's it's supposed to be a little more streamlined, so that's kind of nice. Um, as far as creating messages go, um, that here we go. Yep, that's going to be done with the plus icon. Remember, I told you that's something that shows up quite a bit in Ultra, mm -hmm. um, and you can add them either from this um, messages um, page from the base navigation by clicking the plus. Or um, I don't know if you saw it, but inside the messages page two, there's a plus. Um, you just click that, and it will open. Um, it takes you to the same place, um, but you open this sort of message panel, right? And okay. it slides out from the side, and you will basically click in the recipients box. You can, your, it will have a list of everybody in that class, so you can either select names. Um, to send the message to, or there's an all, you know, send it to everybody option. Um, another nice thing, another great improvement, I think, um, in Ultra is this text editor that they're using, um, which they're calling a rich text editor, um, because it allows you to add um, extra stuff. It's not just text. You can add links to, you know, web links. You can add outside media like youtube videos you can attach okay. files so there's a, you know there's it's it's more than just a simple email message hmm. 
But um, if you'll see down there, uh, another couple little interesting things are that, as I mentioned, um, it's contained in Blackboard, but if you click this little box here to send an email copy, it will go as an email copy. But you can also, if you uncheck this box down here, you can basically send those emails as no reply. So I don't um, know that you would want to do that, but okay. um, it is an option. Okay. Um, Does but, it hold your copies? Does it hold what you sent? Like, do you have a sent box? Yep. Or, yep. Yeah, well, great. what okay. it is, is it, it'll show up right here in this um, okay. messages. So okay. they'll just be listed in order, essentially. Uh, okay. Got it. They'll stay there like that. Okay. I see. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. They sure okay. will. Unless you click the little trash can to get rid of them, uh, they'll stay okay. there. Okay. Very good. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. Great question. Um, but as I said, they're, they're sort of trying to keep everything sort of self-contained, I guess, would be yeah. the way to talk about it. Okay, cool. Very nice. Yeah. All right. All right, so next, and you, um, you asked about this, is the announcement. Now, uh, one of the new features that I really like in Ultra is this, uh, this announcement pop-up window, which um, I like because what this is, is anytime um, you, new announcements have been posted, um, mm -hmm. if a student opens your course, um, before they can actually get into the course, this new announcement window pops up so that any announcements that have been posted since the last time they accessed your course are going to be, they have to click through them first. Ah, now, are they, you know, it doesn't guarantee that they're going to read them, right? I mean, how many times, yeah. right, are students going to be clicking in? It's like, I got five minutes to turn in my paper. <laughs> you know, they're going to, yeah, they're going to cruise right, right through this. But, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. But, but like, but like the mess, you know, again, they're adults, they're responsible for it. They know it's there. It was put in front of them. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, just like the messages, if they go to the announcements um, and, you know, if they click on the announcements, there will be a list of all the announcements. So, you know, it's not like they go away. You can review okay. them later. Um, okay. But, you know, but this little pop up will just, it, it's just nice because it's like, hey, there are new announcements. You know, and you can't even get into the course unless you click through it. So it's, you know, you know that e they may not have read them, but at least they had a chance to, <laughs> I guess, is mm -hmm, kind of the way right? I look at that. It's there if anybody but, says, you know, nobody ever told me, which always happens. Yeah, right? exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and they um, they've, you know, yep, and they've done some, they've they've made some changes. Like I said, uh, to, to create an announcement, or to view the list of announcements, it, this is on the details and actions menu, which is on the course content page. Um, but you'll click the announcements um, tab, and that brings you to the announcements page. Okay, okay. and you can see I've only got the one here, but um, but here will be a list of your announcements. Um, just like messaging, um, you want to click plus to to create a new announcement. Um, oh, and I don't, I don't know if I mentioned this about the messages, um, but mm -hmm. with messages, if you do not see the plus icon, that's because okay. the course is not available to students. So um, mm -hmm. in order to send messages in from Ultra, the course has to be available to students. Uh, so okay, if you hear somebody who says, hey, I, yeah. yeah, it is. And mm -hmm. but, you know, I mean, most, you know, your course is open the whole semester, so it really doesn't always matter. But sure. sometimes it like at the beginning of the semester when, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes instructors want to contact students before class starts or something like that, that oh, if they're yeah. not seeing that, that's why. Yeah, that's Sorry. a good point. Sorry, I that, to that. No, 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 that helps that because that is a sometimes people think they turned it live and they didn't. And I'll get emails from students saying they can't see it and the professor yep. saying she, yep. they turned it on and they didn't. Yep. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's a yes. usual. Good. <laughs> and and did, did you, I'm, you probably know this, but we have a new um, course availability tool that um, mm -hmm. if it's again back on that base navigation page under the tools, um, one of those tools is course availability. And mm -hmm. if you click on that, that will actually take you to a list of all of your courses. So you can adjust the availability for every one of your courses in one location. 
not having mm-hmm. to go in and out because in ultra i mean in in the original you could it they had a function where you could modify the properties of your course but that you can't get to that in ultra so this is sort of our way around that for now okay mm-hmm. got it okay but that's that's a little that's that's in a different workshop so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks. so that's my bonus <laughs> yes exactly Time with Mike, I guess. but uh, yeah <laughs> But you will, you'll just have a list of announcements um, and they'll be, you know, they'll be shown in the order that they're posted. Um, okay. When you go to create a new announcement, right, it looks similar to the the text message. You again, you have this rich text editor um, and actually um, a new feature that they've recently added to the text editor is this table thing. So now you can add tables to the, to your um, messages and announcements. Um, but again, uh-huh. these these tools on this side here allow you to add links, um, attach articles, um, hmm. you know, put in videos, things like that. So it, there's it's really quite robust. Right. Um, that's great. But okay. yeah, yeah, it's 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 cool. Um, you don't I- have a choice in announcements. You have to send them to everybody. Um, so okay. I don't really know why they have this here even because it's the only choice you have is to send it to all course members. But, okay. Um, but but you can see it's got it's got the normal, you know, font editing tools and things like that. But down at the bottom, you'll see again, we've got um, that, you know, those boxes, right? One is mm-hmm. to send an email copy. So if you want to send an email copy of your message, uh-huh. you've got to check the box. Um, I, okay. I believe I would have to double check again but i believe that these this email copy is something that is going to be a no reply thing you know it's just mm-hmm. it's just a cur- you know it's just another way to notify them of the announcement mm-hmm. but um you always got to make sure you click save and another one of the changes is that when you do that um announcements stay hidden until they're posted Okay, so um, it's kind of a two-step process to to put up an announcement, right? You you type it out, and then you save it, and then you'll come here and either if you're ready to post it, post it now. Um, but what that does is that allows you to be able to sort of create your announcements ahead of time and then just post them when you need to. Um, okay. Another thing you can do is schedule when those announcements get posted. Um, so that's another way. Um, And you'll do that by clicking that schedule announcement button. And when you do that, it'll pop up these boxes here where you just put in the dates, you check one box to show it. And if you want the announcement then to hide again at a later date, you can do that, but you don't have to. Um, You know, most instructors just put the announcements up and just kind of leave them up for the whole semester. You know, you never know if a student's gonna need to reference it or something like that. But, um, Mm -hmm. you know, if it's, there may be some reasons to hide things too. So it's a tool there for you to use. Uh Uh-huh, nice. Yeah, that's helpful. And Mm -hmm. so you can schedule these all in advance, sort of, if you wanted to schedule them out for them? Yeah, that's, that's, yep, Uh yep. You could could schedule for your entire, you know, announcements Mm -hmm. for your entire course for the entire semester. You know, like say you Mm -hmm. wanted to send an announcement, you know, the day before every test, you could, you know, as long as you know when your tests are going to be held, you can schedule your announcements to go out a day ahead of time or a week ahead of time or whatever, you know, just to remind students, hey, right. you know, test tomorrow or hey, you know, we've got right. a special meeting at whatever or, you know, study group meets in the library at this time on this date or, you know, I mean, it, it there's really a lot of different ways you can use it. Um, you know, I, I like it. I, you know, but I with the students, I sometimes wonder how much they pay attention to this kind of stuff. Yeah, interesting. This I'm, I'm wondering, like, is this an easier way to contact a group rather than send out my mass emails from my email? I wonder which one they'd pay attention to. Yeah, yeah, that's a anyway, good question. I'll, yeah, I'll I don't, test I don't it out. <laughs> get half and half. <laughs> yeah. gonna say yeah. that. Sounds like you get yeah. a a thesis yeah. out of that probably right, right exactly yeah that little lightweight question yeah <laughs> need some research <laughs> yep exactly but um just just remember that you know you do if you 
if you don't schedule them to be posted, you do have to post them in order for them to be seen. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's but once they are scheduled, you can mm -hmm. forget about it. They will post automatically. Okay. Okay. Very good. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to take just a second to take a drink here and ask you if you have good. any questions. Yeah, take a break. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, no, so far so good. I see that, um, and you explained that all very well. Great to see how <clears throat> the announcements work and uh, how the look is cool. different with Alta. Yeah, very good. Thanks. All right, awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to move on to uh, the next communication tool or which is uh, Blackboard Collaborate. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, yes. <clears throat> so uh, again, Collaborate is, um, you're going to access it under the Details and Actions menu. Um, I'm, I'm sure you're, are, you're familiar with Collaborate? Yes. At all? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes, a bit. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's Blackboard's web conferencer. Yeah. Um, we were using it a little more now. than before. Yes, right, exactly. Yes, right, right, exactly. Right. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, but in Ultra, it's a little easier to get to because it's it's right here on the um, details and actions menu. You can either, and you see it's got sort of where it says join session and there's that little arrow. That's because um, you have a couple options, right? If you have scheduled some sessions, they will be listed here. Um, so like, you know, some student or some instructors will set up, you know, if you've got like, say, a synchronous class that meets every Wednesday, you know, you'll have them all set up, you know, you can s set the events or the sessions up to repeat. Um, and then you'll just go here and click the correct session to enter. Um, but there is also um, the course room. And the course room is something that's sort of always open. Um, so anybody can access it so that's another place you can sort of if you don't want to um, like set up sessions you can just say hey we're all going to meet in the course room at this time mm -hmm. it it i mean it's it's a matter of personal preference i don't think mm -hmm. it you know it it's always this it's the same tool either way so it's just kind of what you kind of prefer to do um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the other thing too is that those three dots there again um, that's um, pulls up I hope I got it on the next slide here yes that pulls up that sort of pop-up menu um, so this is a way this is where you're going to go to for example if you want to set up a new session you'll click this manage all sessions and that will take you to um, if you use collaborate and original it basically takes you to that same same sort of thing where you set up your session you you select the time you know, you can create, um, you know, you can decide if you're going to allow guests and think, you know, and you just set up, you know, how early people can get in and things like that. You can set up your whole, all your sessions. You can go here to, and, but this, what I like about this is that, you know, you can get your recordings from here. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a little, it's a little quicker, I think. Um, mm -hmm, sometimes mm -hmm. people would get a little confused when it came to finding recordings in the original. So I think this is a little more, a little more on top, you know, a little easier to get. Yeah. Through. Yeah. I think this but, is improved. I know when they first put out collaborate, I was having a bit of a trouble. So this is much better, I think. Right. This looks yeah. different to me. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it, it is a little bit, but you know, it's mm -hmm. still, I mean, it, it's essentially that, you know, the tool, the Collaborate we're using now is, is essentially this. It's just an ultra. It's a, it's a little easier, I think, to get to some of the functions you need. So, Great. Which is nice. Yeah, that is nice. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, um, but, uh, you know, you can use the, the collabor Collaborate you can use, right, for more than just online class, right? You could use it to set up like a test review session. Um, mm -hmm sometimes people will use it for to set up like office hours you know virtual office hours yeah online study appointments group, with your students right? yeah yep study okay. groups mm -hmm. um and also um if you if you like create group assignments then mm -hmm. um those groups automatically have sort of their own 
um, link to the collab, like their own little collaborate session so they can actually use that as a tool as well. So they can get together as groups. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's pretty versatile. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, and, you know, like I said, it's good for more than just holding a synchronous online class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, right, right. Very good. Mm -hmm. I'll keep that in mind when Zoom isn't working or driving me nuts or there's a couple other things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, you know, we've got three different tools now, so you should, ought to be able to find right. something that works. Right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right. Exactly. Yes, right. Yes. Find what works with what. Mm hmm yep yes all uh, right so there you know i've used i've used all the tools and they're mm -hmm. i mean they're all kind of the same each has sort of different strengths and weaknesses and mm -hmm. one thing too is they they're always improving these things so you know yeah. zoom is getting better um, i know teams is starting to add this sort of classroom deal going you know i haven't really checked out too fully but um you know i and collaborate also the same thing it's you know mm -hmm. we're getting better yeah yeah isn't that good yeah i just it's, yes excellent yeah they, that is great everything keeps up the designing and i'm not so scared of updates as i used to be so that's good <laughs> yeah 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 well mm -hmm. and, and that is one thing about uh you know the black or the iteration of blackboard that we're on is we, we move to the what are they called the SAS model where um, oh. you know they're 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 updating things it's not like it used to be where where we get like once or twice a year updates it's like we're, it's kind of a continual update schedule so they're they're monthly updates so especially in ultra functionality improves you know every month so that's mm -hmm. kind of nice mm -hmm. That is. That's really good. Yeah, that's good. Is there any time that it shuts down like automatically? Like what was it? What system system used to shut down and reboot? Like, I don't know. I mean, they just, they'll let us know if it's down for maintenance, right? Yeah. 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 We know that that's kind of a thing of the past with this okay. new sort of model, uh, um, because mm -hmm. um, I mean, I suppose if something big were to happen, it mm -hmm. might you know, there might be a, some sort of interruption, but mm -hmm. generally this thing should always be on. This always, okay, great. That along with storage space is probably a primary good thing, right? Yeah, yep, <laughs> yeah. yep, great. absolutely. Okay. Excellent. Uh, next, we're gonna come to one of my favorite communication tools, which is um, mm -hmm. the rubric. Um, mm -hmm. I uh, This is something that um, Blackboard has improved. They're, they're calling them interactive rubrics now, which maybe is a little bit grandiose for what you actually get. But um, what one thing that's nice, and we'll talk a little more about this in a minute, is that um, now rubrics allow you, well, I'll get to it. I'll Let me just go through my shtick here. There are a couple of different ways you can um, create rubrics or mm -hmm. attach them to your assignments if they're already created. Um, and you'll notice our our buddy, the gear icon right here. Um, this is, and you can attach rubrics to assignments or tests. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing you can't do is you cannot attach a rubric to a, an a assignment or a test with questions, which I know sounds weird, but you need to think of it sort of in Blackboard terms because they're, they're two ways you can ask a question, right? One is by creating a Blackboard question. The other is by creating, by using text to just ask, you know, when you create an assignment. So mm -hmm. when Blackboard says questions, they're talking about sort of these, these pre-formatted questions that they have, like you, you know, you go in to create an assignment and you select a true false question, or you select a multiple choice question that you create. Okay, those mm -hmm. those are machine graded questions, so you can't use a rubric, essentially is how it works. But if you just okay. click the text tool and you say, you know, okay, I want you to in this, you know, what I want you to do is turn in a paragraph on this, then you can attach a rubric. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. just some people sometimes get that's a little confusing. Um, so just wanted to put that out there. But uh, what you're going to do is, like I said, there are two different ways to create your rubrics. The first is if, when you're creating an assignment, um, 
if you um, click on the gear icon on the assignment set to open the assignment settings panel and you're going to scroll okay. down and you'll see where there's use grading rubric right and you'll just click add grading rubric Pretty okay easy. yeah right? and, and what that does then is you can see you're still on this assignment settings panel and there you can see I've got some rubrics that are already here, but there's also the option to create a new one. So if you've got a rubric that you've already created, um, you can attach that just by clicking the plus. Or if you know you want to make a brand new rubric, you click create new rubric, and um, it'll take you to the rubric creation tool, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, the other way to create a rubric is from the gradebook page. Um, which again, in your course, um, top left there, you've got those tabs. You're going to click gradebook. That brings you to this gradebook view. And again, you're going to click the gear icon. This time it opens not the assignment settings, but the gradebook settings, which are a little different. But if you scroll down on the gradebook settings below the categories, you will see where you have your list of your rubrics. And this is where, again, so like if you if if you want to create some rubrics before you've actually created the assignments, this is where uh -huh. you're going to go do it, right? Okay, cool. But mm -hmm. uh, if but either way, if you click create new rubric, it's going to take you to the same spot, which is this mm -hmm. rubric creation page. It it starts out as a four by four. Um, they've actually recently upgraded this. Um, Excuse me. You can make a rubric as big as 15 by 15 if you want. Um, that seems a little over the top for me, um, but you know it's up to you. I think you can put in. I think in each cell you can also put a hundred or a thousand characters, so you can have a, a pretty detailed description. Um, but uh, but what you want to do is. Um, Oh, and before I forget, um, one of the changes in, in Ultra is that rubrics are percentage or percentage range only. Oh, we have okay. asked that um, they make points-based rubrics, uh -huh. uh, and they have said they will, but we haven't seen yet. Uh, uh -huh. So, you know, but really, I mean, there there are a few ways around that, like. Um, and you know if so if, if i mean if you really wanted to like if if you had a four by four rubric and you make your rubric the assignment worth 16 points you've basically given yourself a points based rubric right because for each of those cells going up you're going to get one two three or four points okay that's you know i think using percentages is fine i also i like it because that way you can attach the same rubric to different assignments or with different point values, right? So like, say you have just a, a general sort of essay rubric, you know, you can attach that to say a one page, you know, 10 point assignment, and you can also attach it to the final paper. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's, that's one thing I think that's nice about using percentages because um, then, you know, if, if one paper, one assignment is worth 10 points and another is worth 100, you don't have to change the rubric. Okay, interesting. Um, but to like it and to add things to your rubric, one thing you need to do is give it a name. Um, up here in this box here, you click this triangle um, and that will give you the choice of either percentage or percentage range. If you want to add rows and columns, what you're going to do is you're going to hover between the columns or the rows, and you'll see the, a plus icon pop up. You click that plus icon, and it automatically adds either a row or a column, depending on where you're at. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to edit cells or column headers and stuff like that, you again hover in the in the <clears throat> excuse me cell or header. You'll see a pencil icon come up. 
you click the pencil icon that'll take you into where you can start editing so you can type in your descriptions you can change them around um, the one thing is right is since it's percentage based you got to make sure everything adds up to a hundred percent and um, but you know other than that you can pretty much do whatever you want don't forget to click save otherwise okay, uh, have your... okay. Yeah, it usually doesn't let you close without saying okay hey, wait good it will remind you, you, you may thank you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh another thing too is that um part of this too when you scroll over these um one of the options that'll pop up is a trash can so if you want to get rid of something click the trash can and away it goes mm, cool okay that's easy peasy mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish, like I said, if I could was doing this live, I could show you, but it, no, it's pretty, it. it's yeah, pretty intuitive. It like you'll you you'll can, see it right? pop up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Cool. It looks good. Yeah, yeah, I can see how that could work. All right. So uh, one of my next, uh, the next tool we're going to talk about are discussion boards. Um, this is a, this is more of a text-based um, way to communicate. Um, okay. There's, you know, they're very discussion boards are very similar um, from original to ultra. Um, the, it's laid out a little differently, but again, you'll see the plus icon if you want to add sort of a discussion. Okay, you can post the discussions like you can have the discussions posted directly in your course, um, which you'll do from the create item. Uh, panel that if if you take the getting to know ultra that's when we talk about all of that kind of stuff um, but you know the discussion board is something that's going to you know that other people are going to be able to see so this is more of a general um, you know or way to communicate with everybody in your class um, mm -hmm. and um, since I know you've taken the same classes I have in many instances um, mm -hmm. you know a lot of instructors use a discussion board like they have a special discussion board set up for mm -hmm. um, questions about assignments and mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. in class, and mm -hmm. um, the Ultra Course View has done something that I I really think is pretty cool, which is they have created what they call a um, class conversation, and oh, okay. so essentially what this is is just a dedicated discussion board that is attached to your assignment or your test, okay, any assessment, oh, and all you have to do is there's a yeah, there's it is. There's a really there's a little uh, box you check to allow class conversations. Once that's uh -huh. checked, that sort of creates this little discussion board. Um, uh -huh. And what you're going to do is you're going to see this icon right here show up on your assignment panel. And okay. if um, and if somebody has put posted something on that discussion, mm -hmm. you're going to see that little purple dot in that bubble there. Okay, that's okay. just a way okay. for you to know whether or not you got to check that. Um, uh -huh. Another way it notifies you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, it did not. Um, this is our class conversation. Again, you have that same text editor, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And you've got these um, these tools here that allow you to add links, attach files, attach other media. Um, nice. But um, yeah. And and you do have to remember it doesn't say save, but it says respond. So you gotta gotta click that button to to, to save your okay. response. Ah, uh, okay, very good, very good. That's yeah, good. I I think that's a a nifty tool. Um, yeah. Because yeah, mm -hmm. because an, another thing it does is like you don't actually have to open the assignment to see the class conversation. If something has been added to the class conversation, when you're on the content page, you'll see this little blue bubble. Cool. Okay. okay. If you see that, that means something new has shown up. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I'll have to point to that out to students. Yeah, because sometimes they don't want to ask instructors or professors. They, a lot of things can be solved between peers, right? Like, you know, right, sometimes right, yeah, they're... yeah. It's the same type of mm -hmm. thing, exactly. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Great, and this would this will work with with a um, organization too. Is that right? Like if I have a, yep. I have a, uh, yeah, okay. It should. You, I mean, you would have to create some sort out. of assessment. Yeah. 
Right, right, right. Oh, okay, gotcha. So oh, I meant, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it would have to be a conversation with that. Got it. Yeah, okay. Well, there are some mm -hmm. things that are like a, a, a Yeah, a, you know, a, you can just create a regular discussion board, too, if, yeah, if you yeah. just want to oh. have a general discussion going on. Yeah. But, but this sure. this class conversation is, you know, it's, it's specifically focused on that particular assignment, which right. I think is helpful for um, both instructors and students, right? Because yeah. it's not sort of a general area where it's like, well, what is this person talking about? It's like, you know, this is related to this assignment. Yeah, so. absolutely. So the, the instructor could get, you know, 15 of the same question and this answers it. So then yep. it lets them know that, yep. yeah, something they need to know. Yeah, yeah. cool. No, that's, that's, that's very smart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great, great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so, great. Well, you know what? I'm I got to run time, to the so three o'clock. You too, me too. I was just going to say that. I got to okay. run on to my three o'clock. But All this right. is well, awesome. Give me just two seconds. Please, yeah. We have great. journals, which are okay. items. That's sort of a private conversation between you and your student. Um, oh, really? If you create okay. a journal and students write in it, um, you know, it's the same text editor, blah, blah, blah. Um, and again, you'll see that blue speech bubble by your mm -hmm. journal if there's new content. So you'll know if you need to review it. Um, uh, you'll click on the journal, you click this participation button here, uh -huh. and that will take uh -huh. you to a list of all the students. And you can see there's a little blue dot if there's new content in any of the journals. Ah, uh, cool. All right. Okay. One um, quick question. Again, you know how, okay, go yep, go ahead. Yeah. Do you know how we do um, our MS uh, IT portfolios, and we suggest students mm -hmm. write a journal. It just made me think about that, you know, how they're supposed yep. to reflect on their, is this a good place for them to write this kind of journal? Or um, I'm, I'm wondering, is, um, yeah, is that part of the organization? It is part of their or, class. It, it, it actually yeah, if, if, if it's, yeah. I, I don't remember how it, it's attached to a class, right? That portfolio right. is it's a class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the um, professor. So yeah, that the, probably would be a good way to do that. Okay, okay. And if once they once the class closes, the semester's over, can they still get these journals, or does they, does the professor has to open the class again? You know. Oh, that's a good question. I do not know the answer to that. I will let you know. Okay, cool. That would be I'm, interesting. I'm, I that think it might be, yeah. I mean, you could save an archived version, but that's that's uh -huh. a good question. I'll check that out, and I will email you an answer. Oh, okay. Terrific. All right. Yay. Well, we All were right. done, so awesome. I know you got to okay. run. So Yeah, but uh, this is fantastic. Thank you so much. I will, I'll look for awesome. it again. Well, too, if you so. do have any questions, Judy, don't hesitate to get a hold of me. All right. Well, great to hear and your you voice. You got to me directly, or yeah. Silent. Yeah, it was good. To, right. I was. I'm yeah. glad to see you on the list. So. <laughs> Terrific. Hopefully, Thanks I'll so see much. you again soon. Very yeah, good. Yeah. Take it easy. I'll talk Here. to you later. You too. Awesome. Bye now. Thanks. Bye.